Super Rugby is no longer the premier competition in the rugby world. We're going to tell you today how this happened and how we think we can get it back to the top. And so what I'm going to do for you now is take you through the history of Super Rugby and how we got to where we are today and then see where we can go for the future. The history of Super Rugby. In 1993 we saw the first Super Rugby, which was the Super 10s. It wasn't fully professional and it wasn't very well organised, but it was the start of something. But wide, he's between Henny LaRue now, this is a ball for the forwards here, MacDonald, enormous pace and power. In 1996, Sanzar came together and made Super Rugby or Super 12, and it was fully professional. We remember these Super 12 days now as the peak of Super Rugby. Hardy fans, great competition, even the Australians could win it. And some absolute characters playing for some of the best teams. The first ever Super 12 game was in New Zealand at the Showgrounds Oval in Palmerston North on the 1st of March 1996. The Wellington Hurricanes hosted the Auckland Blues. So referee Paddy O'Brien starts the watch and we're away. Professional rugby is alive and kicking here in Palmerston North. In 2006, the idea of expansion began. We went from 12 teams to 14. Super 14 was still high in Super Rugby. The Rugby World Cup in 2007 had just happened. South Africa had just won. The Bulls were competitive and had won a Super Rugby title. It was all still going in the right direction. Then 2011 happened. We expanded to 15 teams for the first time. Five teams from each nation in South Africa, Australia and New Zealand. Fans were watching less and less. And so what Super Rugby decided to do was expand again. The addition of another South African team, the Aguaris from Argentina and the Sunwolves from Japan. 18 teams with four different conferences. It was what we could call a messy situation. Sanzo realised that Super Rugby, or Super 18, wasn't working. And so what they did was cut three teams. The Southern Kings, the Cheetahs and the Western Force. Leaving us with four Australian teams. Then COVID struck. And what we saw was obviously borders closed, people unable to travel, and a divorce of, I guess, Super Rugby. South Africa Rugby and New Zealand Rugby disagreed on a few points of how Super Rugby should move forward. So the South African Super Rugby teams ended up heading north to the URC. To the DHL Stormers captain, Stephen Kitsoff and his team are the inaugural United Rugby Championship champions. It left Super Rugby kind of questioning where to next. Well, that's the now for us. Super Rugby Pacific was born. 12 teams, 5 New Zealand, 5 Australian, 1 Moana Pacifica and 1 Fiji and Dutta team enter into a competition. Super Rugby had taken for the first time in more than a decade a step in the right direction and Super Rugby had performed well. The Pacific was an interesting competition. Teams, fans, players were buying in. Then these two stepped in and said, Hold on, wait a minute. We think we deserve a bit more money as well. Rightfully so, the Australian chairman sat there and said, you New Zealanders are getting a bit more money than us and we deserve our cut of the pie. And as the Australians were looking into every option they had and deciding would they stay with the Super Rugby format or could they do their own to compete against the likes of AFL, A-League and NRL, Luckily, negotiations happened, it's back again for 2023, and with the option to push it all the way out to 2030. So those 12 teams now give us a foundation to build from. And building off this, what I want to see is a bit of commitment, organisation and competition. The Australian teams last year already showed that they're bringing the competition back to Super Rugby. But let's look into the future and the ideas we bring from the sports booth to you. The issues I have with Super Rugby Pacific at the moment is the 12 team competition, eight teams make the finals, and there's no consequences for losing. So therefore, a loss, or like we saw in the Highlander season, you can lose more games than you win and still make the finals. So in my head, I thought we need to find a way to reward the winners and punish the losers. When I first came up with this idea, I said, you know what, let's do a two division system. Two divisions, we have 10 teams in each division, and we push for promotion relegation between the divisions. So in this example, what I've done is the top team, 10 teams from last year, they're in Division A. In Division B, I've got Dura Moana Pacifica, a second team in Queensland. You can't tell me the Reds can be the only team in Queensland. Brisbane, easy. You either go Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, or Townsville. I've put two options there, because I think Townsville is the option. We see how passionate they are 
about their rugby in Townsville, about their rugby league, sorry, in Townsville, and how passionate we can make them about rugby union. Keep Moana Pacifica, but actually put a team based out of Samoa. Fiji and Dura are going to show that this can work, and, and a team based out of Samoa, and then my second one below that is Tonga, will actually elevate those two playing nations. As Moana Pacifica and Fiji and Dura were pay, making their bids for Super Rugby Pacific, there was a couple other teams or places or consorts making their bids for franchises. One was the Asia Pacific Dragons. I would then go a team in Adelaide, a team in Western Sydney, another team in the North Island between Taranaki and Hawke's Bay. A central base team could work easily. And then a South Island team based out of Tasman, I think could work really well. Take away from those Crusaders. How this would work, you're probably asking. Well, we'd have a home and away competition, so that's nine games each, so 18 weeks in total, semi-final and final, and a promotion relegation. I've got the example of what a standings might look here. Again, this is just taken from what we saw last year and what I've made up now. So imagine the Blues win, Crusaders, Brumbies, Chiefs. Those four teams are your finalists, so Blues would play Chiefs, Crusaders play Brumbies, Blues hold, ho, win and Crusaders win, Blues host the grand final. What we see is the Force and the Rebels finish second to last and last. What we see is the Dura and Moana Pacifica finish first and second. Dura and Moana Pacifica play in the final. Say the Dura win. Dura automatically promoted, Rebels are relegated. Moana Pacifica play the Force in a promotion relegation battle. This two division system was, was I was sold in it. Until Husey gave me an idea. If you don't know Husey, he's my podcast co-host. And he said, I actually like the things of keeping them separate and keeping them separate divisions all play together, but you have an Australian champ and a New Zealand champ. And I sat there and I said, I like that idea. Let me go and look at it. So I came up with this. Division A, we don't change. So we've got now six teams in both top divisions. Dura, an Australian division, the Dura jump in with the five current Australian teams, Moanaka Pacifica jump in with the five New Zealand teams. In Division B, we've got the Australian Division B, I've gone with a Central Coast based franchise, Queensland second team, New South Wales second team, Adelaide, Asia Pacific Dragons and a second Asian based franchise. For the New Zealand B Division, we've got the Tongan based team, the Samoan based team, Hawks base slash Taranaki, Tasman. What I've added here is the Kanaloa Hawaii group, which was another group that made a bid during the bidding process for Super Rugby Pacific, wasn't accepted over the Moana Pacifica bid, and then an Asian-based franchise. You play each team in your conference and division, so Australia Division A, New Zealand Division A, each team in your conference, home and away. You will then play everyone else in the other conference at that division level. In your division, one place two, one place two. We have one final. So there'll be a Super Rugby Australia final, a Super Rugby New Zealand final, then those two winners play off in, the, in a grand final. If the season kicks off on February 24th as it is currently, that gives us 19 weeks until the July window, meaning we get that two-week break again to come together for an international camp. The Blues and Crusaders would play off in their final. The Reds and Rebels would play off in their final. Central Coast and Queensland 2 would play off in their final. And Tonga and Samoa would play off in their final. From there... Say the Blues win and the Reds win. Let's keep the colours battling. The Blues play the Reds. The Reds play the Blues. If we look at the Division B, Tonga and Samoa play. Say Tonga wins. Tonga's going to get promoted. Moana Pacifica coming down. Central Coast get promoted. Waratahs coming down. Central Coast and Tonga play off in Division B Championship finale. This brings me on to my next point, the Super Brand. Super Rugby is becoming a brand. And you're going, what, what do you mean, Luke? Super Rugby Americas has just been announced. This has taken over the Super Liga, which was like the South American slash American rugby competition. And so now we're going to have a Super Rugby Americas with a, a team based in Colorado from America, a team based out of Brazil, a team based out of Paraguay, Uruguay, Argentina, two teams, and Chile, a team. Now this brings me on to my next point. Asia Rugby Grand League 2024. Don't be surprised if you see this being called Super Rugby very soon and building an Asian presence for Super Rugby. Now, where I see this big picture all merging is I see a return of the South African teams, but not as you quite know it. I've called this Super Rugby Global Domination. Australia and New Zealand Super Rugby, so we've got Super Rugby Pacific. Super Rugby Americas, 
Super Rugby Africa, uh, the South African teams don't have to play in the URC and travel, you know, four or five plus hours. They play in their own competition and Super Rugby Asia. For Super Rugby Africa, I've got the six teams already there, named there. I've also added the Lions twice. Good on me. But basically, I want seven based South African franchises. I want a Namibian-based team, a Zimbabwe-based team, and a Kenyan and slash Ugandan-based franchise as well. Super Rugby Asia, we take those three Asian-based teams in Super Rugby New Zealand Australia, Super Rugby Pacific that I've built, and we combine it with the top 10 Japanese-based teams, add a Hong Kong-based franchise, and we make 14 total Super Rugby teams in the Super Rugby Asian comp. What this sets us up for is the Super Rugby Championship. The top six teams from Super Rugby Pacific, Super Rugby Africa, Super Rugby Americas, and Super Rugby Asia make it to the Super Rugby Championship. Mimicking that of the Champions Cup. Mimicking that of the UEFA Champions League. What we see is four pools of four with these 16 teams. Ideally, it would be play everyone in pool home and away, so you'd play six games. Top team from each pool qualify for the semi-finals. Played midweek would be the idea. And the final will be at a neutral venue. What I'm trying to sell at this point is make the final of the Super Rugby Championship a big Super Bowl. The biggest event you can possibly have. Because you'd only be playing the Stormers or the Sharks or the Lions for the first time in many years, it would be quite the event to go and watch them to face those South African teams. You're not playing them on a weekly basis. It's a once in a you know, maybe two, three, four, five year opportunity. I think this could work really well. This is my big idea to really develop Super Rugby as a brand and build on what we already have. If you like the idea, if you hate it, please feel free to write a comment. Please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell to get notifications for when we drop videos. I do videos talking about Super Rugby or International Rugby every weekend. We have a Rugby Union podcast that comes out every Thursday. So please feel free to hit subscribe and join in on the community and let me know more than ever what you think about how we can fix Super Rugby right now. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. We will see you next time. See you later.